Taxi! Ooh, look, Homer. The IRS. Boo! Oh, boo yourself. Oh, let's see. Another day, another dollar. Another dollar, another OSW time. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Here. I'm oh, Calico. yeah. Making kids cry, bra. Absolutely brilliant. So, we are looking at picture Doink with the curly green hair. And I'm thinking that is a um, leg. Yes. Very, very We're 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. And it's there's no mistaking it, that's an OSW tattoo. I love that as well. Yeah. And it's only the second time a catchphrase has been used. Steve had the honor. Irish coffee. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I love the way you hate coffee. Yeah, and I that's your coffee. gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it. I do love it. Fantastic. Do you want to hear Adam's boy stable? Of course. Ooh, and he also explains why. Kurt Hawkins, the best losing streak in the biz. <sighs> Don't care for him. <laughs> <laughs> so an ultra boy. Yeah, he's like a boy gone to heaven. I do believe he may have shown back up in like TNA recently. So like that might be like mega boy now. Like. Mm. Especially with the cane. You know, he walks around with a cane. Oh, he does? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very boyish. Zach Ryder. He's not a boy. Mm. Can't accept. Says oh, I think he's very boy. He's too popular. In 2007. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kane literally wheeled him off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. And that was the end of him. Adam says he should be everyone's boy 14 years in the Fed before he got fired. Legend. He was fired in April 2020 when they were culling stuff. Oh, yes. yes of course. D'Lo Brown. Ooh, he's one of yours, right? Was he never one of yours? I don't think he's been an official boy from no. any of us, even though we all like yeah. D'Lo Brown. Okay. Although, there was a time he was a cunt to us when we went to see TNA, so maybe that's what kept him off the list. Yeah, wouldn't show us to our seats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, why Do your it? job, mate. <laughs> 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 did he not show us in the end, no? No, he got stroppy and... <laughs> but why did... It, that was, as you say, that was his job. He was an usher, so... Why, why was he why waiting at the corner of the seats, you know, where ushers... Yeah. Well, and you know, d didn't you have one of those like trays as well with the popcorn on it? Yeah, <laughs> a little torch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because you threw a drink in his face. <laughs> Adam says D'Lo because he had a chest protector before Roman Reigns and gave Triple H one of his best matches. The, <sighs> the blindfold match. Yeah, great match. <laughs> Number four. The Warlord. Beefy fucker can bench 500 pounds 19 times in his ring gear while Vince stands there getting a boner. Mm. <laughs> Hacky boner. <like. laughs> Hacky boner. <laughs> yeah, Warlord, very accepted. Uh -huh. uh, as I said about 80 episodes ago, he's a man you'd love to shove into your main event. <laughs> <laughs> He is a big beefy fucker. I love the look as well and the Kano mask and the staff with the W. Oh, get in. Okay, two more. We've got Hardcore Cunt Holly. Says he thought he was a badass as a kid. First pay-per-view match I can remember staying up and watching was St. Valentine's Day Massacre, February 99. And Holly beat the shit out of Al Snow and threw him in the Mississippi River. Yeah, now Thurman is in my stable. He can have Hardcore, yes. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't want either. So, uh, <laughs> enjoy your boys. <laughs> <laughs> and finally... As a Welshman, I have to have Mason Ryan. Oh, 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 oh that's a buddy. <laughs> Remember, buddy. What was that from? Because he's Welsh. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just said Barry from Valleys. <laughs> uh, yeah, terrible. Yeah. So the Welsh wizard here in his boy's name. Wizard. He, he could. We would also have accepted Rob Terry. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a different person. He's a big <laughs> OOC boy. <laughs> He's like Mossy if Mossy ate Mossy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he says, Thanks again, Jay. You, V1 and OSC, have given me such joy over the years and helped me through some rough times. Very kind of you, mate. Love you guys. Oh, Cheers, you, mate. Thank, thank you, you very, very you much. You fucking beauty. And your boy stable is a pretty fucking decent one. It's, it's, a, a, it's a, a proper boy yeah, stable. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You know it. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo. Come on, clap it up. Woo, woo, woo. Come on. Bro, what are you doing, man? Hello, or as they say in New York, 
Get the fuck out of the way! <laughs> <laughs> it's the OS, it's always a V94, the OSW Mountain Dew KFC Gold Honey Mustard Barbecue, gotta be, gotta be double on spray! Ow! <laughs> we review the Raw before the Rumble, the 94 Slammies, the 94 Hall of Fame, and close with the Rumble pay per view countdown. Monday Night Raw, the fighting frontier. These are the adventures of William Shatner with the hitman Bret Hart will attempt to boldly go where he's never gone before against Jeff Jarrett and the roadie on Monday Night Raw! It's your boy, Jay Hunter would be one. What's the story? I know it's he. We do. Is the Raw before the Rumble, the fighting frontier. William Shatner? Bret Hart will go where he's never been before. Against Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue there, mate. It's raw! January 16th, 1995. Taped one week prior in Houston, Texas at the Summit, a.k.a. the Bad Blood 2003's Compact Center. Bad Blood 2003? Is that yeah. Triple H, Kevin Nash, <laughs> killing us <laughs> out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. me meow. Well done, <laughs> sir. Green Screen Vince welcomes us alongside HBK Shawn Michaels. Now, Vince would be doing a roulette with color commentators, so he had Lawler, DiBiase, Cornet, and since December, has settled on heel HBK to give him some screen time while he recovers from his fist injury. That is really funny. It's like he's he's going as tippy toes so he could be taller than Vince, mugging for the camera like Bob Backlund's cutting a lot oh, the axiom here. I remember when I was a small boy, and he's like, a small boy. <laughs> um, Sean was great during these. He single-handedly carried the bill for both the Rumble and the Diesel Brett match. He was brilliant. William Shatner, if you're not careful, Double J is going to send you, my friend, to a galaxy far, far away. Lightning Spark versus the Heavenly Bodies. Gigolo Pearl Harbor's the kid to kick off. Cornette, oh, he's in blistering phlegm colours. <laughs> <laughs> his jacket's a TB red, his shirt's bacterial green, and his tie is white cell yellow. Nice. And if it's clear, you're probably Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Del Rey with a top rope splash is reversed. Jigolo does all the work. He actually pulls Bob's leg over him. And that's the Million Dollar Corporation's cue to get a closer look at ringside. They're facing Sparky and Kid at the Rumble. Continue pummeling the baby faces. A double suplex attempt, but Holly drives through Pritchard, allowing Kid to perfect plex Jigolo for the one, two, three. Oh, just takes Pritchard out. Look at them. Babyfaces pull one out of the bag after 4.35 with four unbelievable quips. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. I can't believe it. Bam Bam and Tataka. Can't believe it either. I'll never believe this. Did you watch this? I did watch this. Yeah. Commiserations. The, the match was eh. what I didn't get. So these two teams faced off on Superstars the previous week. It was in the semi-final of the tag tournament to go to the Royal Rumble to wrestle for the tag titles. Um, John and Diesel had vacated there. Yeah, because it's a pittance. Mm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't understand why they're having a rematch. It makes no sense in any way, shape or form, other than just to waste four minutes of TV time. Ooh, there you got it there. You there got I got answers. it. Yeah, yeah. Backstage with Bret Hart and William Shatner. <laughs> They try to pimp Hart's match with Jarrett. Kirk interrupts Brett and answers Sean so quickly, it's like this sounds pantomime. Mr. Shatner, yeah. Heartbreak Kid Sean Michaels here. Uh, I now I realize you. you're going to be watching the back of the hitman, Brett That's Hart. right. And as Brett is trying to cut his promo, Shatner keeps on going like, yeah, we're going to get him. That's right, Brett. And he completely takes Brett off his fucking train of thought. His usual high quality game. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I, I think everybody's worried of whether I have ring rust, but the fact is, there is none. none. I feel 100% I've seen and I work. am going to... Is it, why wasn't uh, Shatner at the Rumble? Oh, because Ra uh, Shatner's here so he could promote another USA Network show. <laughs> tech War. Oh, oh, tech War. Yeah. Tech War. Bit of techers. Techers. Oh. I'll keep it short and simple. Tech Chip. Tech headset. <laughs> it's good to have you on board in our war against tech. I've been on board for some time, Marty. <laughs> he was also there the previous week where he was on the King's Court. 
I was dreading the segment. I'm not the biggest fan of Shat. Um, <laughs> Shat the bed. <laughs> Shat. But I'll give him his due. He was really, really good. Him and King worked well together, and they both worked well to make each other come across about as well as possible. These are the people that watch Tech War. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jerry the King Lawler. Rody, stay away from my man, Brett, or you'll be roadkill. Ooh, have you heard about the uh, boomer fight? I did. I have heard about it, but I don't know what it is. It's a... Uh, Red Letter Media. Yeah, it? yeah. William Shatner. Um, he just says, people stop asking me about coming on a Red Letter Media. I don't do podcasts. <laughs> and then your man Mike just goes, what's a podcast? <laughs> and uh, Shatner, you've never... If you look his t- at his Twitter, you've never seen someone with so much time to argue with fans. Holy shit. Anyway, Red Letter Media, they do an excellent 20-minute bit on it. It's basically their version of getting Black Rain blocked. It's c- okay. Because Mike loves Shatner and right. he loves Star Trek. He just, he's yeah. always bringing up Star Trek and relating how everything is a rip-off of original yeah. series Star Trek. Mike's the class. <laughs> like, so at the end, he's actually kind of broken up about being blocked and hated by William Shatner. So. But Shatner's just misguided, I assume. He says he doesn't do podcasts, splice him on Mike Tyson's podcast. <laughs> uh. But he's like, I'm not doing internet shows, is what he means, I think. But why did he block Stoklowska? I'm gonna Stop guess, asking me, I think. Okay. I'm going to guess he got hockeyed out of it by fans of their show. If you think it meant the fans that would rally behind us and then multiply it by 100? No, 10. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't think he gets their comedy either because he saw a picture of them at the Nerd Crew. You know, they do their Star Wars, ATS, theaters, you know, the parody of nerds, podcasts and stuff. He'd see that and like, oh, that's what they're like. But he wouldn't get that because maybe he only watches the first for 30 seconds of a review or he doesn't know their style, you know? It's like, no, mate, that's a, that's a satire. I love that bit, by the way, the ATS. <laughs> yeah, yeah if I can read out a media guy, it's great. Remember the Rebel Base? I clapped. I clapped when I saw it. I clapped when I saw Darth Vader. ATSTs. ATSTs. We're back, everyone, with more Monday Night Raw. And take a look at this most unusual creature, if you would, on his way to the. Hey, wait a minute. Who's that, Willie? That's Jim Cornette. Next up is Mantar versus Jason Arndt. <laughs> he literally is mooing here. The debut of Mantar, half man, half tar, half <laughs> bear pig. Man bear pig? It is half man, half bear, and half pig. A minotaur, yes. I uh, love his passport photo expression his face. He's just... <laughs> Uh, he's a lot less ethnic looking under the bright lights of WWE's million dollar lighting rig. Is he meant to be ethnic? I just thought he was a big dude. He was just sweaty. A big white dude, yeah. What has he got? Running belly pushes, more running belly pushes, and he splash flop into pin, and that's it in 144. Is there, I guess. Uh-huh. I'm going to go down with your big ripping derby. I cover right here, I count in. Well, there you go. Three count. What, what in the world is that noise? Is that the uh, Mantar mating call or something? Thumbs up. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Hoofs up. <laughs> uh, yeah, a journeyman, a gimmick jobber with a jobber squash. A bit surreal. Yeah. Uh, the return of sex jazz music. <laughs> It's the Rumble Report with Todd Pettengill. Taker and Bearer, they cut a promo in front of a beach background. It's mad looking. No amount of money or druids can save you from the Reaper. Of note, the Toddster, he said hello to Jarrett at the top and made him wait all the way through his extended Royal Rumble report before he can give his promo. Where Double J exclaims that Brett and Tech Ward should be worried about Brett, not him. And Rody gives us the Spock sign. <laughs> yeah. And Jared calls Todd Eddie Monster. <laughs> Which is fucking great. Because next up is Jeff Jarrett versus Bret Hart. I love that the roadie does his mic check. He's like, one, two, one, two. Only after Jarrett's entered. So it's useless for him. It's great. 
Take on a match of this magnitude and facing double. Brett's new jocks here, uh, black spooge instead of the white spooge. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you big fan of that? On just on the obviously not black spooge on the black trunks because then you wouldn't notice it, yeah. but on the pink. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any anything, bit of variety, but with the kind of essence. <laughs> of of the man himself okay <laughs> let's move on uh, at the rumble he actually had a solid pink top three moves in immediately vince gets on brett's case for being more aggressive wondering if he's changed storyline plot point for his rumble match see you next time on always w brett works over jared batting away his counters like double j escapes with a scoop slam nope hitman rolls through to maintain his armbar Vince must be so happy with Sean because he has some Shatner barbs, which also put over the WWF. He's like, whatever Shatner's planning, you better get it right first time. Only one take in the WWF. Yeah. Classic Vince. <laughs> uh, going Scared. Out. Did Vince. he get a fright? Yeah. <laughs> going out of and coming back from the break, it's barely English. <laughs> Obviously, will he give us a bit of... Can you read this as fast as you can okay. in the Vince voice? In, in the bowl there. Will Double J to be the Eman Brain? Here we go. Says one for the move. We'll be right back as we continue with more action. <laughs> I did okay with that. Was, that was pretty yeah. great. I could because when he watched it, we were back with Roman Reigns. We're going to go to the Eman Brain. No. Fucking great. Welcome back, everyone. We apologize for that. We're back to the match. Continue to hit that man hard. Brett's rope axe handle from Jared. Of course, it's successful. Jared with a second Brett's rope axe handle? No chance, mate. Brett's signature inverted atomic drop, signature Russian leg sweep, big suplex, and signature Brett's rope pinpoint elbow. Tying up Jared in the ropes, Brett lunges for him, but Rhodey releases Double J, so Brett Spider-Man bumps off the middle rope. And the Rhodey trying to get him out! Brett on, no! Finish. Oh, no, 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 figure four. Oh, no, 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 whip to the ropes. <laughs> back into a roll up, but Brett pulls him back, getting himself on top. One, two, three, with a nice thank you slap on the bum. <laughs> Brett Hart wins it in 12 minutes. No, no, not quite. One. That'll do it. Yes, it did it. A handful of tights. Come on. You gotta be kidding me. Double J was robbed. Really good. Jared and Brett was never going to be bad. Uh, even if it didn't have a clean finish, it would still be decently wrestled. But we did get a finish because Brett is the main eventer. I don't think Jared losing before going into his uh, IC title match really hurts him. So yeah, thumbs up. Even thought Shat was decent here. Can I ask, do you think Jared was maybe a year or two too late joining WWF? In that he could have been swept along with HBK and Brett to the top of the card, even Owen to an extent. If he got there in 93. Yeah, maybe even ni- like 92. He was just a little bit late, so they had already been elevated up the card. And so he's the new gen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually. Mm. If he got a different gimmick, like yeah. they, they book him to be an idiot in the music world and the wrestling world. So if they took him seriously, he could have gone way farther. Oh, it's time for Shatner's spot. Forearm the roadie. Dodge his flying nothing. So he's just whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Three turnbuckle shots and throws the roadie out. Very generous. Road dog. He's working by himself here. And there we go. In the following week, we'll actually get to see Brett and Shatner leaving the ring. And Shatner's like... What a tag team combination. Tech War and Monday Night Raw. <laughs> He's a pro. Uh, Absolute fucking pro. What a tag team combination. Tech War and Monday Night Raw. By the way, uh, Shatner rubbed people the wrong way. Woo! I had a raw by supposedly being stuck up. But like, what does that even mean? Oh, you're stuck up. He didn't shake hands with all the wrestlers. With Bob Holly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. When a much more famous person comes in who doesn't know locker room etiquette, he doesn't know what to do. Because he's not a carny? Cause, yeah, because he's not a carny. Like, would they hold that against him? Depends if they like him or not. <laughs> <laughs> because he literally said last week, look, Jerry, I'm just here to promote Tech War. <laughs> <laughs> I do not care about this program. That's that's like all I care about. Right. Listen, John Lawler here. <laughs> uh, that's it 
for Shatner until February 2010, where he was Raw General Manager. Is that the episode where he sang the song? Yeah, yeah the uh, fantastic karaoke segment. Yeah. I'm just all sexy boy. <laughs> really good stuff. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. And he's actually better at singing the game than Lemmy. Yes. His, his laugh is really good. <laughs> nice. It's time to play the game. To play the game! <laughs> it's all about the game and how you play it, all about control. And if you can take it, it's all about your debt. And if you can pay it, it's all about pain. And who's gonna make it? <laughs> The King's Court with the Million Dollar Corporation. Rumble 95 definitely won't be a horror show for them. IRS totally gonna be Taker. Bammer and Tatty undoubtedly winning the tag titles. And King Kong Bundy will easily win the Royal Rumble. DiBiase slags Sparky and Waltman, calling them Hit the Wall Holly and the 911 Kid. 911 Kid is a good name. Bob Spark Plug Holly. Hit the Wall Holly! <laughs> That's right, and the 123 Punk. Back to the pits for you guys. The corporation is alive in 95. Do you like God. that uh, rhyming the new year? It's very 80s and 90s. Uh, mm. Like Greg for a solid two years. Yeah. It was like 88 was great, but 89 is mine. Your brother, Greg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was from Tone Loke. The corporation is alive in 95. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? 88 is great, but uh, 89 is mine. There are two solid years of hearing <laughs> Mo on a mission. Mo. 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 Nah, it's Mabel versus Jobber Lee Toblin. Flying nothing by Mabel. Sean's like, impressive, impressive. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Impressive, impressive. Mabel is all over his opposition. McMahon asks how HBK could possibly eliminate Mabel this Sunday. And he says, who says I have to? Got other guys to do it. Fuck yeah. Pummel, pummel, pummel. Jobber Hogan Andre slam? Nah. Immortal leg drop and Mabel punches Tublin's ticket after 2.34. That's your main event. <laughs> this is your go home <laughs> yeah! show. Yeah. To your second biggest show of the year. Toblin. <laughs> On his way to the Royal Rumble, it could be Mabel who wins that big rumble. Yes, he's already starting to celebrate. Post-match Mabel interview. Sean asks, you're the biggest, but why are you going to win? Because I'm big. That's Be it. quiet. <laughs> and then Sean becomes the filling in a fat man sandwich as King Kong Bundy kind of... <laughs> 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 and then Mabel golds Bundy to get in the ring. Four minutes left of Raw. He got an ad for the Royal Rumble. Beachside superstars are distracted by Baywatch's Pamela Anderson. Including Diesel, who is doing a tug of war. And he's like, ooh. And Lex, he's spotting someone. And he's like, duh. <laughs> and Sean is chatting up some birds. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> They're all massive geeks. <laughs> pervs. They're all pervs. The best part is the all the wrestlers crowd around Pamela and uh, she has to pretend to be interested in Adam Bomb. <laughs> the WWF Royal Rumble. Live on pay-per-view. Adam Broom? No. Not no. now. Not now. Maybe eight months ago. You just wait until he comes out at number 28 in the Royal <laughs> Rumble. <laughs> Just uh, FYI, Baywatch and Vince, they're uh, in talks about doing a wrestling episode and it was obviously it never happened. It was turned down because WWF wanted to be paid. Baywatch said, no, the exposure, we're a big show, way bigger than you. That should be enough. And uh, it never happened. And Baywatch found people that would do it for free. Yeah. Come on in, WCW. Sullivan Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can check out. Bash at the Beach. We reviewed it with Alison. Yeah, loads of fun. Great show. 
Yeah, and you reviewed like the nitros and the pay per views are ending as well. Like. Oh, it was fucking awesome, uh, yeah. Steve. I'm telling you what, you're you're fast becoming the workhorse of no. OSW. <laughs> no. I mean, this lad, he's absolutely lounging not. on a, a Shay Long, you know, it's dangling just, grapes yeah. over his mouth, he's <laughs> doing it himself. Like <laughs> nobody's there doing it for him, and he's just having a laugh, uh, having now, the crack. You know, tell me something. So fortunately, we're finishing up at WrestleMania 11. <laughs> Before in your house begins. Oh yeah, we go. oh my god, yeah, <laughs> a bullet train out of there. <laughs> what would happen if we just still did the big five? Would you do the in between raws and in your haces? We'd have to do the in your haces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I fucking would. So bad. Bit of Stephanie Wyand in your face. Oh, like. you are so lucky. Let's. <laughs> lucky. Yeah, we are. We are ending at WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Uh, we close out Raw with a Truck Mang music video. <laughs> yeah, that's how his run went, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's a preliminary version of his WWF Full Metal uh, Volume 1 song. 1995 isn't the year of the pig, it's year of the diesel. Oh, that's a snappy line. That'll get you over, <laughs> won't it? <laughs> I'll see you at the Royal Rumble. I just want to point out uh, the Cowboy Brett song that they did like the year before. So much better than this. Like it actually has character. The start the fire in me. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Don't say who that woman is with me. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Sonny. <laughs> and it's not Julie. <laughs> Oh shit. Yes, <laughs> I <That> was wrong. <laughs> Fucking useless. See you at the rumble. Ooh, it's dancing Jesus. If there's a better use for the internet, I haven't found it. If you've committed a crime and you want to confess, click yes. Otherwise, click no. You have chosen no, meaning you've committed a crime, but don't want to confess. A paddy wagon is now speeding to your home. Hey! While you wait, why not buy a police cap or t-shirt? You have the right to remain fabulous. On this, the final day of the year, we thought we'd pause to reflect on the happenings of 1994. Today, we will proudly present the Magnificent Mania Milestone Awards. Otherwise known as the Slammies. Next up with V1, we have the 1994 Slammies. New Year's Eve 1994 on WWF Mania. Mm, also known as the Mania Milestone Awards, hosted by Todd... And yeah, Stephanie Weand or <laughs> That's her chattering teeth. <laughs> <laughs> she can eat an apple through a letterbox. <laughs> uh, so the show opens up with them unveiling the actual Slammy, which I think is not a bad looking old trophy. I love a Slammy. Yeah, it'd, it'd be pretty fucking nice. No golden nogger, obviously. Mm. What do you got? Oh, I got most intimidating. Most intimidating. Yes. Hold on to that I'm one. I'm going to. We're going to do that first. <laughs> So they open up with most intimidating and it goes to The Undertaker because yeah. he's pretty much the only over and intimidating superstar that they have. Yeah, he sent Yogazuna packing. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. they have um, nominees or just give the winners? They don't have nominees. They just say who they think is going to win. Uh, and they both said, oh, I know who's going to win this one. Uh, it's The Undertaker. And we took the opinions of... Us. us. Yeah, so we pick them. Uh, so then we could. Firstly, uh, how long is this show? Uh, the show is 43 minutes long. Ooh, tidy. Per mm -hmm. an episode of Raw, yeah. Cut to uh, most blocked Twitter account. <laughs> oh, <it's the> <laughs> <one>. <laughs> and so then we cut to a replay of the Undertaker versus Brawler match from the 26th of December Raw. What are you doing wrestling? 
The Brooklyn Brawler. Which I already watched, and I was like, I have to watch this fucking movie again. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. The only difference is that rather than having Sean and Vince talk over it, we have Gorilla Monsoon and Stan Lane. Oh, he's talking smack about your boy. Oh, I don't know why you like Stan Lane so much. I, would, I said he wasn't that bad. I wouldn't consider that. You oh, love you him. Love you him. Love That's the him. highest praise he's ever gotten. <laughs> Intimidating with a capital I. Undertaker, headed your way, IRS. Lane talks about, I think we should have a slammy for most dreamy. And Pamela Anderson is going to win. To which Gorilla Monsoon says, she's not an official employee, so she wouldn't be up for it. <laughs> I was like, what a twat this guy is. He's a killjoy. That's disagreeing for the sake of it. Yeah. For sure. If this is going to be the new home of Double J. <laughs> Throw to a Jeff Jarrett in Vegas video where he goes to Caesar's parking lot. <laughs> he talks about how all of the greats have played here, like Elvis and Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> and he says that he may too. I hate the way that there was, he never had an ain't I great song. You know, like if this is modern day, if Elias said, hey, I've got an album coming out, he'll actually bring out an album. Yeah. And he did. He does have an EP. Yeah. You know, Jarrett should have got one. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would have no digital downloads. People aren't... Oh, in 95. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll just start it downloading now. Nobody pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, remember that? <laughs> Couldn't pick up the phone. From his album, Ain't I Great, this Monday night on Raw, Todd. Todd and Stephanie then say that Jeff Jarrett is going to sing this Monday on Raw. It's going to be the debut concert. So it turns out he's not going to sing in Aww. Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Which he literally just said. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll just do it on Raw. And what a liar. Rinky dink shithole. Like, you know. He knew he was lying <laughs> when he said it. I can't wait to be alone with my baby tonight. The Slammy for Best Entertainer. And they both say, oh, it's going to be Jeff Jarrett. He is the greatest wrestler of all time, the greatest singer of all time, the greatest, greatest entertainer lover. of all time. It goes to Oscar. And they're both <gasps> really angry. <laughs> <laughs> Not even an average entertainer. <laughs> yeah. You don't stop. You don't stop. Man, all the bitches. Yeah, you don't stop. Next up is the Slammy for Worst Idea, which goes to Abe Knuckleball Schwartz. <laughs> That's a great... Pick, actually. Yeah, because he got signed by WWF and immediately went on strike, never earned a penny. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have the Slammy for Sweatiest. <laughs> <laughs> and they both talk about they know exactly who's going to win on, it. Come on, come on. It's IRS. <laughs> Does he? Yes. No way. Shit, seriously. IRS wins it. Oh, that's fucking amazing. Like, yeah. That, that you know you're thinking they're going to pick Bastion Bugger yeah so. yeah yeah no no yeah. they shoot they actually shoot awarded it they shoot that's incredible and they give it to IRS and they joke that well it looks like he joined up with the million dollar man so he could pay for his cleaning bill <laughs> that's brilliant yeah, well that's done great. lads yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that yeah. like a waterfall wet 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 next up is you sweaty bollocks <laughs> <laughs> next up is a slammy for biggest rat uh with <laughs> Come on, Alan Montoya. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Ah, it shit. goes to Owen Hart ah. for his shenanigans at the Survivor Series. And they go on to call him the King Rat, which gave me um, flashbacks from A Boss in The Last of Us 2, which I will say no more. <laughs> Next, they throw to a squash match between Owen Hart and Book Quartermain. Man, he's all over. He, I book. told you. Book, book yeah. is all over this yeah. fucking show. Owen hits a running knee. Book takes a really nasty bump right on top of his head. A little oh bit fucking scary. Owen then puts him in the sharpshooter, quick sub. You know, I've just had the greatest Christmas. We get the Bret Hart promo from a few weeks ago on Raw when he's wearing his mismatched denims. Ooh, tell me. What, oh what's my he God. wearing? Denim jeans and a denim shirt, but they're both different shades of blue. Beautiful. <laughs> it's the most Canadian thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Brett says that he got exactly what he wanted off Santa, a title shot. He says he'll prove that he's the best, and for now he's just going to deal with the world title, and then he'll deal with Owen Hart afterwards in his own time. 
still the best there is and the best there was and the best there ever will be. WWE Shield, their WWF Holiday Wish Tour. Moving on. <laughs> Next up, we have the Slammy for the greediest. Ooh, oh, surely. Maybe this mm. could be. Goes to Tatanka. Oh, oh, nice word. He got that 10 quid. <laughs> <laughs> he got the bag of quarters. <laughs> it's our bag of quarters. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah he gets this for great shout yeah selling out and for his new gear tell us more about Tatanka Steve Tatanka we don't hear enough about Tatanka <laughs> absolute megastar who should be <laughs> featured more and when we're not talking about Tatanka we should be asking where's, where's Tatanka? Tatanka can I just say when it comes to parody award shows like the Slammies I really don't like when they make specific awards for specific people the sweatiest, the greediest. That was specifically for two people. To get over the yeah. military yes. corporation. Yeah. 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 Don't okay. like it. Yeah. It's true. Uh, we have Slammy for most spectacular match. <laughs> most spectacular hair. I was like, oh, <laughs> one goes to Tom Pritchard. It goes to Ridge Ramon versus Shawn Michaels for their WrestleMania 10 ladder match. Okay, that's just a shoot then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it yeah. was either going to be that or the cage match between Brett and Owen, but that was terrible, so. Or the royal family and Dunks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, best Colosseum video <laughs> slammy. <laughs> what? The best exclusive. I kid you not. Can that be a Golden Nogger Award best Colosseum exclusive? Yeah. Well, then yeah. it's a pittance is going to win. Yeah. That's like making yeah, the yeah, award okay. for the pittance. Cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got this. What a pittance. What a pittance. <laughs> what a pittance. What, a, what an amazing word to use. <laughs> He's never said the word before yeah. or since. <laughs> <laughs> One of the three highest accolades in the world of wrestling. <laughs> what, a what a pit. I spit on your belt, Vince. <laughs> He'll never see this. <laughs> Best Coliseum video. So this is just a shill ad. It goes to Raw Video Secrets from the Raw Video Game, which has just literally come out by our game yeah. and their videos. I wonder what the secrets are. I was going to guess it's just moves. <laughs> I, I can't imagine it being anything else. Can you imagine if Salem the Cat was on it. He hosted oh. it. It's like you press forward and punch, and now you know the secrets. <laughs> uh, we get. Steve, a- I would love a review of that. I'd, I'd want to know the secrets of WWF WrestleMania the arcade game. If you want me to watch it, I will watch this. Poor Steve. <laughs> Next up, we have a Kama promo. Oh, wow. Which says he's tougher than Tyson. More menacing than Seagal. Quicker than Van Damme. Coming to Raw. 330 pounds of thickly muscled beef in perpetual motion. Kama, the supreme fighting machine. You know, he was supposed to come back as Papa Shango. There was actually a rumour that they were going to explain Bob Backlund going mental because he was under a spell of Papa Shango. That sounds way better than what they did. Yeah, but after UFC 3, Kimo Leopoldo had a great showing against Royce Gracie. And they said, okay, Kama, you train MMA for one month and this is the gimmick. You're going to parody him. Oh, he was after Kimo? Yeah. Kimo okay. Leopoldo. It was a good gimmick. Kimo had a great gimmick. Uh, he once did an entrance where he came out carrying the fucking cross because he, he was like a big Jesus dude. That sounds disrespectful. I am Jesus. <laughs> I think it's like... I've had it way worse than him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. <what laughs> had it significantly worse than him. No, I, I, I just think it's like he had a tough time. He had his cross to bear, overcame it. Now he's here in the main event kind of thing. In the passion of the chemo. Yeah. Next up, best tag team goes to Jesus Quebecers. <laughs> <laughs> Sean and Diesel. No, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's very, yeah. that's very bouncies, isn't it? You know, give the award for whatever is actually relevant the at the time. The two singles guys. Yeah, like just yeah. because it's a thing. Yeah. I think we didn't. We win the break. We must have won some bouncies. We did, but. We deserve them. I don't think OOC won any. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just take both of them, is it? Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> that sounds like something yeah. like me. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant gimmicks, lads. Worst tag team is next. 
Oh, Jesus. This is a stiff competition. They're going to have Shark like tank. bushwhackers because you can't kill the bushwhackers. Sean and Diesel. What the? Uh, f- they win both best and worst hell. tag team of, uh, of fixed, the year. Fixed. Yeah. Uh, next up, the Slammy for the mouthiest. Jim Cornette. Who has a big mouth? Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have it written in here. They should have just given it to her. She does. She's like Baraka. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Lawler. Yeah. yeah. Most eccentric. What's wrong with you? I'm doing the. You don't get it. All right. Most eccentric. Goes to Bob Backlund. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Smelliest. <laughs> Bastion Burger. It's a draw between Duke the Dumpster Drossy and Henry O. Godwin. Fantastic. Both dealing with shit heaps. Uh, both would have flies around them, I imagine. And both come out smelling roses. <laughs> there you go. Both baby faces. <laughs> <laughs> Smelly baby faces. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, Kevin Nash, he would give out he hated. When they're on tour, they'd be doing a couple of weeks in a row on the road. Other wrestlers, they wouldn't wash and they just whack on like brute. <laughs> and uh, especially Razor, he just doubts himself in it. Really? And it's like, fucking hell. Yeah. It's it's called a Spanish shower. <laughs> <laughs> Best movie is next, which is the one they just threw in for a joke. It's a draw between Princess Caribou and Speed. And Todd fawns over Speed saying that the writing and cinematography are incredible. Oh, wait, wait. Do you mean a, a shoot best movie? <laughs> yeah. He just what? added in a shoot What's slammy for a best movie. What's the point? Because it's just them having the crack on their show. All right, I thought they were going to make wrestler movies. Mm. That would be better. Oh, that'd be way better. You have to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Most likely to see Jenny Craig. Who's Jenny Craig? She's some weight loss guru. Oh, okay. It goes to Bastion Booger. Because he's fat. Mm. He's fat. <laughs> How do you like your meat? Bastion, I like it raw. <laughs> <laughs> it's raw. It's, it's what? A- it's raw. We get a clip from the Tonka versus Bulldog on Raw. He just won't fuck off, will he? Uh, tell me, he's, he's he's everywhere. Tatters. Match ends in a big schmals. No one wins. <laughs> no one gets over. <laughs> fuck you, Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, best pay per view of the year, Mania Ten. Yeah. They don't talk about the matches, they talk about the celebrities. But then Todd butts in and goes, eh, Rumble's better. <laughs> Actually, I didn't vote for this. I know you did. I voted okay. for the Royal Rumble, Royal. which is always my favorite. Best manager, Million Dollar Man. The best... How I have. What other managers do we have here? Cornette, Whippleman. Yeah. Lou Albano. Fucking hell, he is the best. Yeah. Wait, wait, the million dollar coming out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> won they nothing. lose all their matches. Yeah. All the time. At least the Head Shrinkers won the tag titles during this year. Yeah. Absolute geeks. Okay. Best new gen spot or ad. It's the famous one where Bret Hart is making his entrance and the kid comes out and goes, Bret! Go get him, champ. I yeah, absolutely I love that. Love that. Best etiquette. It goes to the head shrinkers because they're trying to wear new boots and there's a clip of them wearing a tux. Wow, is that kayfabe shattering? Mm. Most devastating superstar. I was really shocked here. I thought they were going to give it a diesel. And the slammy goes to... Ball Nakano. WWF Women's Champion. She is awesome. She is awesome. Are you kidding? They give it to Bull Nakano and put her over really big. Ooh, fucking great stuff. Yeah. Put what a her check. over fucking big. Next up, they have a quick ad segment where the two hosts shill WWF trading cards. The rat. You want the rat? Yeah. You got to learn how to trade. <sighs> WWF trading cards is a cool one. It actually shows The Undertaker with his monster truck hearse and like giant inflatable taker. It's pretty yeah. good. And then clips from a Hakushi match. And they do the gimmick where every time someone says his name, they go, Gazunta. <laughs> yeah. Also in action, Hakushi! Bless you. Three more. Funniest. I give it a fucking dink. Oh, oh heel heat there. For putting the pie on Jerry Lawler's jocks. And got cream pie. He yeah. got cream pie. Uh, next up. <laughs> <laughs> MVP. Eh, just gonna, they give it to Diesel. It's big. Oh fuck. no, they did not give. It's it a detail. big fuck you to Brett, despite him only winning the belt like two weeks earlier. 
they give it to yeah, long live the Diesel. new generation billy, 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 boo. and the final one and the one to see off the show best show it goes to WWF Mania yeah! and they celebrate <laughs> <laughs> and they thank people and sign off and we're out I love it yeah I'd like to thank uh, whoever gave Stephanie that shirt. Yeah! I mean, that is uh, one heck of a New Year's shirt. Thank you very much. You should hold this with the shirt. I will, I will. We're out of here. <sighs> and that's your show. That seemed a lot longer than 43 minutes. Yeah, wow. It was non-stop. Yeah. There was no breathing room at all. Can I Can I just tell you something about Hakushi? Yes. He was Zoom good. He, he was good. He could wrestle. I agree. And he also had Japanese symbols on him painted. Oh, pa- I'm lynch. sure they weren't they weren't tattoos. There was no way they were no, tattoos. No, because on yeah. some week they'd be like thin and the next week they'd be really thick and bold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Shawn Michaels on commentary is like, So, uh, Vince, do you know what these symbols mean? I heard that he owns a Chinese restaurant and that's the menu. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, oh. That's good stuff. He's Japanese. Is that when he get a like a roller and just go over his face? <laughs> <laughs> that's how he gets it. It is. I, yeah. 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 I'm not sure when he had his feud of Brett. I probably after WrestleMania, but um, it was a great match. Solid wrestler. Yeah. Everybody to WWF Mania, Stan Lane along with Gorilla Monsoon. Want to wish each and every one of you a very happy new year. This is our the last match, Gorilla of 1994. 95 has got to be bigger and better than 94. Thank you so much, Steve. Holy shit, that was an odyssey. <laughs> uh, Odyssey. Thanks so much. I uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, of course, uh, the Slammies is kind of a kayfabe, jokey, best of 94 recap. And I was like, okay, if you actually wanted a legit 94 year in review, what happened? Okay, top five draws of 94 Triple A's Conan, Triple A's Paraguayo, Shinja Hashimoto from New Japan, number four is Bret Hart, and number five, Masachono in New Japan. So, Triple A, number one and number two, but it's not all gravy as Triple A brown trousers, the Mexican peso is plummeting and needed to break into the US market to get some of that sweet, sweet dollar dollar from the US, hence when worlds collide with WCW. He's screaming this from the third one. rope. He's famous for this splash. Two, five, one, two, and three. Now the fall is over. Isn't that regarded as one of the greatest pay-per-views yeah. of all time? Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully we do it one day. We should do that. And then the next time do Heroes of Wrestling. <laughs> Ooh. The two sides are of a coin. Wow. Of course, the biggest thing that happened uh, was outside wrestling. That UFC became strong pay-per-view competition for pro wrestling. Like that it wasn't before. And so, sure, the comic gimmick was yeah. modeled after it. In WCW, Hulk Hogan was signed. Ric Flair was forced into retirement for seven months. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween Havoc 94, Slamboree 95. Jesse Ventura, he was canned by WCW. And of course, the biggest thing that happened in WCW, Ed Leslie main evented Starcade. <sighs> As the butcher, was it? Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Actually did really good numbers. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Hogan was super over. Mm. It's the, you have to do, do it. It's the power of Hulkamania again. And in the WWF, the biggest thing that happened in 94, Vince McMahon spent three weeks on trial for steroid conspiracy charges. Jim Ross fired and rehired twice. The Lex Express crashed back into the mid card. Crash bang wallop. What a video. <laughs> the Undertaker died and was resurrected. <laughs> Roddy Piper returned. And that's it. Hilarious. He actually show up on crutches after having hip surgery and he kayfabed it saying he was he fought a shark. <laughs> nice. I love it. I love kayfabe. Uh, WWF end the year with Backland as world champion, then Diesel as world champion before cutting the legs off both of them. Jesus. <laughs> and it's only gonna get better in 95. <sighs> and I hate clowns! Yeah! They don't have a place in our society! They don't have a place in the WWF! And we're gonna exterminate you, doink! Next up, we have the 1994 Chuba Chuba Hall of Fame Fame, 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 fame Chuba Chuba change of name Name, name, name Or the WWE Hall of Fame Look Back 1994 As it's known on the network Standing in the Hall of Fame 
before the Hall of Fame was a TV special. It was a banquet, a gala type affair, a dinner with speeches, wrestlers old and new, have a bit of crack without the pressures of broadcast and playing to fans, you know. Uh, as such, footage was literally B-roll to prove that they were in fact inducted. <laughs> <laughs> like This is incomplete and not a full show. So Rene Young and Mean Gene Okerlund are here to fill in the gaps. Thank fucking God the whole show was not there. Oh my goodness. Simply back in 1993, the eighth wonder of the world, Andre the Giant. Starts with a video package of Andre and it's blim, 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 blim. A light piano piece. Of note, there's no wrestling moves. Sure, by many one, he couldn't wrestle. Like, he could barely move, you know. Uh, it's all character, but that's what being a WWF superstar is all about. And these moments like strangling Bob Euchre at WrestleMania 4 or his iconic WrestleMania 3 match with Hogan. It was actually his death in 93 which prompted the creation of the Hall of Fame. So he was the first induction. In Stanford, Gene mentions Andre loved the occasional cold brew. <laughs> Andre is a legendary drinker, unofficial record of 156 beers in one sitting, which is over 14 gallons. And it's like, obviously, that's kind of kayfabe, but tons of stories of him wetting his whistle. Like, he'd drink liquor by the pitcher and once ran up a 40,000 bar tap. <laughs> I love the kayfabe. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, he joined Alcoholics Anonymous, where he'd still drink but under a different name. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Sorry, Steve. Um, 100 and how many, how many beers? 156. Yeah, they, they would have been the small ones. You know, like he used to get in Aldi. Oh, the multi The Beer, beer door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The little baby They beers. don't count. They don't count. Is it true that you, had, in one sitting, drank 117 beers? Yes. <laughs> one night. Yeah. And uh, the, did, uh, did that, were you drunk at the end of that? <laughs> I don't remember, I think I passed out. <laughs> Next up, we have Gorilla Monsoon. First of the awful redubbing and dodgy music, like Fink revoices the intro and they had this awful echo behind it. Pretty shittily done. One of the World Wrestling Federation's most recognizable faces, the one and only Gorilla Monsoon! Uh, Tiny Morella has a gig, billed at six foot seven and 401 pounds. Oh, here's him airplane spinning Muhammad Ali. Uh, he was a football player, amateur wrestler before turning pro and becoming a legendary commentator and an average WWF president. <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla Monsoon regales us with two fun road stories. His favorite quip is he was tagging with Andre, who's 7'4", 520 kayfabe. They're taking on Pat Patterson and Ray Stevens, who just won the tag belt, so it's their first not his champions told to look good pat is in the ring with andre he jokes that he's five five and he tells andre let the little one start and then andre is like ha, 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 ha. and anyway and that, and, and that was Andre. and that was andre yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the other one is uh monsoon is working bobo brazil that week there was a bomb threat so it absolutely killed the ticket sales but they still went ahead and had the match they were doing a bit of wrestling bobo got him in a headlock and he's like yeah we got him <laughs> it's like yeah of all 38 fans in attendance that's actually funny mm. and that was bobo <laughs> remember that bobo all 38 of them we had bobo <laughs> Next up, classy Freddie Blassie. Ooh, we actually get a look at who's on top of the podium, the kind of wedding party table. Ooh, there's Stephanie McMahon. There's a sweet zombie Linda. And Vince. <laughs> He's taking care <laughs> of James Dudley. And later we'd see Shane's off to the side as well. Is James Dudley a bit slow? Yeah, I think he's, yeah, yeah, yeah not in compass benders. Yeah. And it's like just someone that Vince's family always took care of and kind of took him in. Oh, we'll get to him in the main event. Okay. Weighing in at 233 pounds, the world heavyweight wrestling champion, Freddie Blassie. Blassie debuted in 1935 at age 17, paid one dollar. His mom kept referring to wrestling as foolishness. It's like, quit this foolishness, get a real job. <laughs> His speech is lots of alluding to stories and inside jokes that we never hear. It's like, oh, hey, Killer Kowalski, you're quite the photographer in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and then they move on. That's it. No explanation. What you don't know is Kowalski is also a top-notch photographer. Remember Japan? <laughs> 
All right. Uh, he does have us with two stories. Wrestling in Japan, where Ar- Arnie Skolan is the ref. Hey, I'm wrestling Ricky Dozan. Just fast count me. And uh, Arnie Skolan says, uh, are you crazy? We're the only round eyes in the building. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> That's what a punchline. Yeah, it's good. It's like everyone laughed and then felt guilty about laughing. Yeah. Uh, Even in 94 yeah. or 95. Uh, remember this one. Uh, you have to laugh at yourself, yeah. surely. Hmm. Uh, Yo, death threats. <laughs> <laughs> and his other story is driving in the front seat with Vince McMahon and his barbells. Vince would like screech, turn and almost throw him out of the car. Jesus Christ. Um, the other note of it is that they only seem to have like one stock interview of him, which they play again in the WWF Attitude amazing uh, vignettes. It's like, I can still hear them chanting my name. And, yeah, you know, yeah. I've had a great life. And like, yeah, fucking great. I can still hear the echoes cheering my name. But today, I cheer for them. Next up, your boy, Arnie Skoland. Golden boy, World War II vet, wrestling over six decades, the 1930s to the 80s. I have to say, they are like very kind to him. They're, it, it's like he did nothing, but they're trying to say he did loads. Like, oh, like the Bushwhackers, they're a great seminal tag team. Do you know what I mean? And friends of Arnold Skoland will tell you, he's one of the best gin rummy players in the entire world. The golden boy. He did win the US tag title for the WWF when that existed, and he became an agent in the 70s, mostly known as Andre's handler, like getting him to places on time and that kind of thing. He was manager to world champ Bruno Sammartino, and manager to world champ Bob Backlund. So he was Andre's handler. Talk, that would be a thankless job. Oh, yeah. You're mm. only going to get abuse. If it goes well, of course he's here on time. Why wouldn't he be? If it goes badly, oh, you're so fucked. Yeah, and the guy that loves drinking all the time. Yes, yes. I think I'd rather be the guy who wipes Yoko's arse than <laughs> <laughs> do that job. You'd rather be Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wipe my ass with a bag <laughs> on a stick. Uh, I will just point out that he was at the beaches on D Day. Yeah. Like, totally fucking Normandy. shit. Yeah. Like, you know, like the fact that he made it out of that, like, holy fucking shit. Like, some of the stuff that he must have seen. Mm. Arnie Skoland, he infamously threw in the towel, costing Bob Backlund the world title against the Iron Sheik. By the way, this induction was June 94, so right before Backlund's heel turn and main event push. Mm. It's not quite mm. clever. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. His speech, uh, thanks for this thing. <laughs> and he puts His over- pittance. <laughs> And puts over Backlund hard. I'll say one thing for Bob Backlund. He was one of the great champions and the best conditioned athlete I have ever seen in my life. He's great. Uh, It just says, cheers Vince, cheers fans, cheers. Doesn't have his trademark cigar here, but you can see it in the Pile Driver music videos. That's one where there's Hot Bird with her arse hanging out, just walks by, and all the rest are like, hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> More of that at the rumble. <laughs> yeah. A lot of hey, baby. <laughs> Sometimes love is like a slow death. Chief J. Strongbow. Todd has a real hard time filling out 30 seconds of voiceover, so he's like, known around the world, simply as Chief. And again, known around the world, simply as Chief. <laughs> known around the world, simply as Chief. Chief J. Strongbone, as we said, still to this day known as Chief. And this is back in the day where you could get away with an Italian-American playing a Native American. Luke Scarpa here, his running wild is the war dance, a lot of knee lifts chops maybe it's the 50s but he's quite um husky for someone wearing so little like he's got these tiny you know the tiny tea towel jocks and it's like i can see everything mate (laughs) you know um finishes with him doing the sad indian face from the anti-littering psa (laughs) (laughs) whatever you do don't look at me told you not to turn around <laughs> and of course the highlight we get a clip of him giving the ceremonial headdress oh, to yeah. Tatanka from Raw last year <laughs> it's gonna be okay it Jeff. never ends it's gonna be okay <laughs> 
Uh, his speech is even worse than Skoland. Thanks, Vince. Thanks, fans. Thank you. Not a lot of people even inside the business You're right. knew about that. <laughs> but he was on hand for a lot of big decisions that took this company to the top. Back at WWE Studios, Gene alludes to why he's really inducted, and it's due to his behind-the-scenes role, an important advisor to Vince when big decisions were made. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal that should be talked about. Having Vince's ear, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, after the debacle of the last couple of years, he's actually getting inducted into the Hall of Fame <laughs> for being Vince's <laughs> advisor. Man, <laughs> Man Mountain Rock. <laughs> Cushy. <laughs> Gesundheit. <laughs> Uh, and then our main event, Bobo Brazil. <laughs> he was actually, his name is supposed to be Boo Boo, but a foreign promoter got it wrong as Bobo and it just stuck. Who turned a lot of hands with his cocoa butt, Bobo Brazil. Bobo Brazil started in 1951. WWF retconned it, saying the 60s, big time babyface, credited for breaking down racial barriers in a time of segregation. Dude was huge, very sprightly, well impressed. His big signature move was the headbutt, called the Coco Butt, uh, the ultimate hard head gimmick. To the cover, referee down, one, two, and it's all done. He had a, he did, but he didn't, NWA world title reign as Buddy Rogers was injured. But then they asked, hey, Buddy, how's it going? And he's, yeah, I'm grand. So <laughs> that, that was that. <laughs> Probably should have asked him beforehand. Uh, so it's not recognized. But he was the first and last WWF US champion. Uh, see, there was no IC title at the time. And it was rumored that since they weren't giving him a world title run, they created this belt specifically for him. And he did hold it seven times. So, yeah, yeah. Kind of reminds me of the rumor of the million dollar belt where they weren't giving him the world title. Well, he had a reign of 40 seconds, <laughs> but here's the million dollar belt instead. Yeah. So the US title is he in canon as the first champion? It's a different belt because uh, the modern US belt is has the WCW lineage. Bobo Brazil, he's inducted by former tag partner Ernie Ladd, the big lad, Ernie Cat. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, captivating speaker. Like he went to WWF, marveling at his uh, unique selling points. He's like, "Yeah, I'm a black guy. Yeah, I'm six foot nine. Fuck yeah!" And then he saw Bobo, and he's like, even taller and even blacker. He says, "Like you know, Tarzan in the deepest, darkest pits of Africa." <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, he said that. He's like, you, you know, it was like Chappelle when he, yeah, like, uh, Charlie Murphy talking about Rick James. He's like, according to Rick James. He calls me and my brother Darkness. He calls us Darkness Brothers. See, this is long before Wesley Snake. And he's both of them is Brother Darkness. Twin Brother Darkness. Brothers Darkness. A twin Brother Darkness. Now you talk about Tarzan in the darkest of Africa. Coco doesn't give a speech because of his hip. Uh, Lad said he tried to break it on him for 20 years, but it was that, the ice that did him in. That was a great line. He slipped and fell on the ice and he broke his hip. Well, Bobo, I guess I tried to break that hip for 20 years and couldn't break it. <laughs> Uh, so we listened to Ernie Ladd instead. There's a bit where he's wrestling Bobo Brazil in the ring. Uh, he got a cocoa butt and he said his head hurt really, really bad. So he went, he was crying and he went to the ref. And the ref was like, oh, what happened to you? And he's like, I don't know. Because <laughs> uh, he doesn't want to put cocoa butt. Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I thought it would get a laugh. It didn't. The referee said, what's wrong with him? I said, my head is hurt. I said, my head is hurt. He said, well, what's wrong? I said, I don't know. And that he's so proud of Bobo because the stereotypes of black men were kind of dope slingers and gangsters. And he was an upstanding guy, went around in a suit and tie, went to the right places, no trouble, no drama. It says modern wrestlers can learn a lot from the people in the room. He actually singles out Razor for greater things. And he gets a heartwarming applause. It was the best part of the show. He was really awesome. Dude, wow, man, I could listen to him all day. Jesus, wow, great talker. Um, it closes with Renee saying, we don't have footage of the last two inductees, James Dudley and Buddy Rogers. So, Dudley. Good night, everybody. <laughs> and we can't be arsed making a vi new vignette either. Uh, it's like, fair enough, James Dudley, he's a close personal family, friend of the McMahons, here count the tickets, here drive my limo, but not nature boy Buddy Rogers. He was the first ever WWF champion. Like, okay, here is one minute. And it's 60 seconds more than what WWF did for both James Dudley and Buddy Rogers. Eh? Give us a minute. I'll talk about both guys. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. J 
James Dudley, amazing track and field athlete, played in the Negro League in baseball in the 30s and 40s for the Baltimore Jesus. Elite Giants. Said to be incredible, like Olympic and major league level, but obviously with segregation, he wasn't even allowed to compete. That's really sad. Yeah. He became friendly with the McMahon family and was the first black man to manage an arena in the US, the Turner Arena in Washington, D.C. And he contributed a lot to McMahon's success, helping him break into the black market. Not, not the illegal. Uh, <laughs> uh, reportedly, Vince's dad, Vince Sr., told him before he died, whatever you do, take care of James Dudley. And so he did, putting him back on the payroll at 74. So uh, he was inducted for his behind-the-scenes work. But here you can see him managing Bobo Brazil in the WWF, running around with a rally tail. Yeah, TNA <laughs> rally tail. <laughs> rally tail guy. <laughs> Love that guy. Mm. Oh, yeah. He's probably at home. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is Mr. James Dudley. He has protected my family for generations. He's the original Bad Bad Leroy Brown, and I know he's on your list. Nature boy Buddy Rogers. At 17, he literally ran away and joined the circus to become a wrestler. He toured all over with the NWA, like with Luthez in Texas, Antonio Rocca in Ohio, and in 1961 defeated Pat O'Connor of the O'Connor role in Chicago for the NWA title. That match went gangbusters and selling adjusted for inflation over $1.2 million in sales. Wow. That's X7 levels there, mate. Wow. Dude was a carny and stopped wanting to wrestle outside the Northeast because the money was better there. Uh, so Midwestern and Southern promoters like Carl Gotch, they shoot, broke his hand. And Killer Kowalski, shoot, broke his leg. Fucking drop the belt, mate. Play nice. And he did to Luthez, uh, which annoyed New York promoters Vince Sr. and Toots Mont, which is a cool name, <laughs> who much preferred Roger's outlandish persona to comparatively boring real deal shooter Luthez. So in 1963, Vince Sr.'s like, fuck it, we'll just leave the NWA. Buddy, you're the new WWF champion, a move that kind of started the demise of the NWA and the rise of the WWF. Uh, his legacy is having invented the figure four leg lock, or the figure four grapevine, uh, as it was known, and hugely influenced important wrestlers like superstar Billy Graham, Hulk Hogan, and of course, nature boy Ric Flair. So, the nature boy, Buddy Rogers, the first ever simultaneous NWA and WWWF world champion. Fuck, man. Buddy caught him coming off. He had Buddy going, but wait a minute, there's that thing you gotta look for, the figure four grapevine. Now watch him, Billy. He's already submitted, the bell's been rung. Now watch, Buddy. He does this every time. Why doesn't time. he break it up? Why doesn't he break? Holy shit, like, this guy is a name that you obviously hear, but... I feel like he doesn't get the love that he should do because in the history of wrestling, like he seems to be one of the most important wrestlers, you know, like not counting bookers and owners and things like that. Um, yeah, he, it seems like he should be more... Um, Celebrated. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you enjoy that? Next arc for OSW, all Buddy Rogers matches, 1922 to circa 1962. <laughs> <laughs> Can you throw in a bit of Hackenschmidt? Hackenschmidt, Tez. I don't even oh, know oh. if Tootsmont wrestles, but I assume he's horribly bad. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all about the man. <laughs> uh, very interesting, Jay, but all I can think of is burly men with kind of barrel barrel chested men holding was. holding each other for an hour maybe an hour and a half i, I couldn't i couldn't imagine enjoying it I don't know, like they didn't trust him so all world title matches were two out of three falls and i was like oh, we're not we don't trust you this is one fall you still fucking job mate it's a yeah. crazy stuff okay but yeah anyway i hope you enjoy that look back at the 94 hall of fame fuck you wbf you should have did what i did just there there's one thing I want everybody to know, and that is, to a nicer guy, it couldn't happen. You're not kidding. Welcome to the world's largest beach party in Tampa. One hot night this January will separate the men from the boys. And our final, and our OSW Mountain Dew KFC Gold Honey Mustard Barbecue, gotta be, 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 gotta be
B1, sir, and the pay-per-view countdown for the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble countdown show kicks off with an ad. Pamela Anderson gets back home and she has messages left by multiple wrestlers <laughs> all saying, Do you know what I have in my hand, Pamela? <laughs> <laughs> They all perv over her via the phone. It's hilarious. Who's we, the best? Who's the best one? I think Sean is always the best. What's he say? Do you know what I have to be? You didn't. Uh, you, you didn't hear the outgoing message, did you? We go to Todd, who goes straight into the heart cell. Oh my God! Call this pay per view. If you don't call this when this show ends, it's gonna fade to black, and you're gonna get to see nothing because you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he throws to a video package about Brett and Diesel. So you know, it covers like Brett losing to Backlund, Diesel winning the title three days later. Diesel as champion. Then he talks about the King of the Ring 94 when uh, Diesel had Brett beaten. He lifted him up. Jackknife. Was he going to make the pin? Mm-hmm. Was Brett going to kick out? We never knew because Nightheart came in yes. and we got the DQ. So tonight we will find out who is the better man. Can Brett finally beat Diesel or is the Jackknife too much? I could have sworn I saw the exact same thing at last year's King of the Ring. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Then we go to a split-screen chat with both men from earlier in the day. Oh, Jesus. Brett puts... <laughs> I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. <laughs> Brett puts over the jackknife huge, says it's like falling out of a 20-story building, i.e. death. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling you is death. <laughs> so then Diesel says, well... I won't be laying down for you, Sean. Brett. I won't be laying down for you, Brett. You gotta get it on me, Brett. And uh, I'm not gonna be laying around tonight. Uh, then... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking that was it. I, I, I told you guys the build to this match has been really bad. Mm. Re- like, Diesel's promos are fucking horrific. Mm. Next, uh, Brett is given a Wrestler of the Year award from German Bravo magazine. It's the third year in a row. Does Brett say thanks or what? Oh, he just says, yeah, thanks. This is a great honor. Uh, thank you very much to the people at Bravo magazine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they put it in here. Todd is working his way through the stadium. He talks <laughs> He's to like, s- a Bravo magazine award. What a pit. <laughs> 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 that is how you put it over. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got this. What a pit. Uh, Todd is walking through the arena and he walks by some random kid and he goes, hey, kid, what are you eating? And he goes, pretzel. How you doing, man? Too far. What are you eating? It's so random. They're just filling this up with absolute garbage. Nice. Todd checks on the time and says, hey, hey, guys, do we have enough time to show this next package? Yeah? Okay, show it. And then they go to a video package about Jarrett and Razor. Ooh, what's the build for that? Ooh. Jarrett comes out and challenges Razor for the IC title. Then... Razor, who was on the mic on Superstars, is going to give him his answer. And as he's about to say, yeah, the microphone cuts out. And then we cut to grainy CCTV footage of the roadie at the mixing desk. Love it. And he cuts out Razor's mic and then has a big belly laugh. Like, <laughs> that's great. It actually was Yes, great. that's exactly why you'd have a roadie. And that is your build. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you are... Come on, Ramon. I can't hear you. <laughs> Stephanie Wyand, she's backstage with Razor Ramon Wyand. and Linda McMahon. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they are there with people from the Make a Wish Foundation. And in like the cringiest, most Linda fashion ever, she gives them a check and says, yeah, but from us at the. Oh, you have world. to do it in Linda's voice. <laughs> <laughs> It is indeed my pleasure to present to the Make-A-Wish Foundation this check from the World Wrestling Federation. So just to show you how terrible this show is, we go back to Todd, who's not ready, and someone is fixing his earpiece, and he's like, oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, he talks to some... Is that a fun segment? Like a fun jokey thing? Or? I don't think so. I just think he wasn't ready. <laughs> and then he talks to some Mark. He goes, hey, hey, fan, what do you have to say? And he's like, Lex Luger, number one, baby. Wow, he looked out with a fan there. Yeah. Lex Luger, number one. He thinks Lex Luger's going to win it. You know what? So clips from earlier in the day where the wrestlers are getting their numbers for the Royal Rumble. Oh, cool. We have Bob Backlund. 
it's all irrelevant. The supreme excellence in warfare is the destruction of your enemy's desire to put out an effort. Off his tits. <laughs> what was he dressed as? He was just, he was wearing his tux. With dicky, his dicky bow. Little dicky bow. Ah. Mm. Uh, smoking guns are out next. Billy says that he won't even show me his. And Bart quips, oh, I'll show you all right. <laughs> <laughs> Lad, save it for the shower. Mm-hmm. Let me see your number. No. I'll show you mine. That's exactly what it is, folks. No partners, no nothing. Every man for himself. Sean is next. Uh, Sean says that he's had easy nights before but they usually involve 29 other women. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah. The heartbreak kid has had some easy nights in the past, but usually that involved 29 other women. He still had to say 29, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Todd brings us backstage, and when he's coming back out, we see Brooklyn Brawler and Book Quartermain Jesus. coming back through the curtains, and they oh. both look pissed off. <laughs> Their match must have been a disaster. <laughs> Book wins, by the way. Well done, Book. Okay, so Todd goes to the ring where he does his warming up the crowd shtick. Uh, he throws to an IRS taker video package, graveyard promos, IRS coming back and interfering at Survivor Series, Druids, Taker coming back at Raw and beating the Brooklyn Brawler. Jesus. Back to Todd. He calls for the lights to be turned off. He introduces Man Mountain <gasps> Oh my God. Ooh. Making his WWF debut. On the pre-show. He plays the national anthem. It's not bad. I'll take this over someone over singing any day of the week. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't botch. He's perfectly competent at playing. Thumbs up, mate. Does he have his tie-dye? He does have his tie-dye. He doesn't have his WWF guitar yet. Ah, uh, yeah, that's coming yeah. next month, actually. Ooh. Yeah, every... The fucking state of him though like he's just so he's so rubenesque <laughs> rubenesque he's just a fat lad yeah you know he looks terrible he doesn't look like a wrestler though you know yeah. like yeah like he can be an awesome fat lad like vader he looks great you know but this guy looks terrible i'm you know i'm sure he's gonna get over big time though and his guitar is a regular <laughs> sized guitar but he's a big dude so it looks tiny on him Looks you know? like a little banjo. Yeah. <laughs> a ukulele. <laughs> Back to Todd. He is doing a shtick when he's interrupted by Jerry Lawler making his entrance. Uh, for the first time ever, he's wearing his red and black gear, which he would wear on Raw for years. Yeah. Don't turn your back. Yeah. On the wall. Uh, so then the very, very end, Todd gets back in the ring, does his final hard sell. He gets one side of the crowd to chant Royal, the other to chant Rumble, and we're out. <laughs> Honestly, this was my least favourite out of all the countdown shows. It was a mess. Plus, they've already seen Buck Quartermain, so you know, <laughs> we're done now. Life has peaked. <laughs> so there we go. Wow, that sounded horrible. Steve. It wasn't very good. Oh, my God. But I enjoyed hearing about it. Thank you so much, mate. The action is coming your way next. 1995 WWF Royal Rumble Live. And that does it for our OSW Mountain Dew KFC Gold Honey Mustard Barbecue Gotta Be Gotta Be Domino's Free Show! Uh, wow, uh, did you enjoy that, OZ? Oh, delightful. Ah, yeah. Who, who is your favourite new gen jobber? Barry Horowitz had a lot going on. So I'd have to say. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> come, come back to me after WrestleMania 11. I need to think yeah, about Hakushi. it. Yeah, Hakushi. But he's answer. not a jobber. You're, you're, you're really you're pulling for him, you know? He's not a pretender. He's a contender. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kilberg. What about this round? Stephen Dunn? He's not a jobber. <laughs> there, he's not a jobber. <laughs> that purple thong says otherwise, mate. <laughs> oh, wait. I can't. I can't. Maybe he'll get a big pop at the Rumble. And prove <laughs> 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 oh, nice. Fucking great. So we will see you next weekend for the WWF Royal Rumble 1995. It's going to be amazing. Is it? Isn't it? You'll have to find out unless you're a loser. <laughs> and in the meantime, you can watch all of our episodes. Fuck. Free of charge and a 9 max level 43 goodness at 
OSWReview.com. Yeah, you can catch the previous 93 episodes. Yeah, yeah. And most of them have Million Dollar Mania on them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's goodbye from V1. Take a boo. And OZ. Yep. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. Now, my name is Mimi. The only books we have are ones that were banned by other schools. Well, the kids have to learn about tech war sooner or later. <laughs>